so it's been a few years since 5G has even came out, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of, you know, future benefits of having a 5G phone. But even if you don't have a phone that does not support 5G, I still think you're in a pretty good spot. So let's go and see how 5G kind of compares against 4G and LTE, and see if it's even worth using 5G. Now personally for me, I don't use 5G on an everyday basis. I will, you know, sometimes turn it on just to see if there's coverage in the area. Sometimes there is, sometimes I do get the 5G little symbol on my iPhone, but otherwise most of the time, actually I would say 99.99% .99 of the time I've ever used a phone in the last like three years, it's pretty much been on 4G LTE and it's been a beautiful experience. But with 5G, you are getting way higher speeds. It's not even funny. So the first thing is 5G is a little bit different per carrier. Personally, for me, I do use T-Mobile, but it's going to be relatively the same type of theory. So for one, with 4G and LTE, one of the biggest features of you know using 4G LTE is that you are still basically getting coverage everywhere. So there's not enough 5G towers all over the country or all over the world to actually be using 5G all of the time. You will basically be, have to be, you know, you're probably going to be on 4G LTE majority of the time. You're not really going to have 5G coverage. The other thing is, and I'll get into this a little bit further, but you have to have a phone that supports 5G as well. And 5G phones can technically be more expensive overall than maybe like non 5G phones. So there's not a lot of overlap between the hardware between these two. If you have a 5G phone, it can support 4G, but not every 4G you know, LTE phone is going to support 5G. I think if you have an iPhone 12 or newer, or basically any phone from like 2021 or 2020 and newer, you probably will already have 5G enabled on that phone. But just in case not, you may want to just check with your you know, serial number or check your iPhone model number or Samsung model number and just double check you have 5G enabled on that phone. Now, in terms of the speeds, Apparently with 4G LTE, you can get up to 100,000 kilobytes per second. That's a lot of speed for somebody even like me. I'm not really doing anything super crazy. The things I typically do if I'm in like, you know, a place that I don't have Wi-Fi in, I'm usually on Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat, mostly TikTok, and I'm just scrolling through. Maybe I'm on YouTube and doing some other things here and there. But with 5G in particular, it looks to me, and from what a lot of people have mentioned, even on the T-Mobile website, you can get up to 20 gigabytes per second. Now, you do have to pay, you know, probably a lot more for 5G coverage, but getting up to 20 gigabytes per second is insane. And I don't really think a lot of people even need that much speed, but they mentioned that you can download a full 8K movie in seconds. You can experience tech such as VR, AR. You can do that without even an internet connection. But they really mention things like automated driving, connecting to more devices. And really, when I think of 5G, I kind of do think of maybe more things that are just way more resource intensive. So you know, a big thing that a lot of people mentioned when I was watching a lot of 5G videos was basically medical equipment, surgeons, different people like that who are actively doing things in like real time that like every like tiny millisecond counts. Well, with 5G, there's going to be a lot less latency than something like 4G. So that was always something that kind of stood out to me. So if you're somebody in that situation who you were planning on being in some sort of like, you know, you need 5G every single millisecond counts, then 5G is going to be the one that's going to make the most amount of sense. But like I said, 5G doesn't have as much coverage everywhere as something like 4G. Now that can change you know, this year. Manufacturers are going by really fast and they're you know trying to increase speeds and increase coverage as much as they can. And that is a really cool thing. But with the speeds in particular, it is going to be a work in progress. Again, you can get up to 20 gigabytes per second, but that's not you know the ideal coverage. That's not everywhere. That's like best case scenario. Most probably, you are going to be getting better speeds for sure. From this article from tomsguy.com back in 2021, they kind of show the average download speed from 4G and 5G, and they kind of showcase that, you know, in for the most part, if you're getting, you know, the average 4G speed, it's around like 37.1 megabytes all the way up to 53.3 megabytes per second on 4G on AT&T Sprint T-Mobile Verizon. But now with the 5G download speeds, you're getting, you know, noticeably more. There's less overlap between, you know, there's not as big of a difference with Verizon because their speeds are already so good, but you are getting better speeds here. So it's only going to be getting better. It's only going to be getting faster. But the thing you have to keep in mind for sure is that is it worth going up to 5G or paying for a 5G phone or even paying for extra 5G coverage? 
And my answer to that would be probably not. For majority of people out there, you probably don't need to get 5G coverage at all. I think you are perfectly fine with 4G LTE. Even in 2023, I think you're perfectly fine. But with a phone, like, you know, but if you're talking about specifically with a phone, a phone having 5G versus a phone having 4G LTE, you're really only going to be getting capability on the 5G phone if you're going to be using 5G. However, a majority of phones nowadays already have 5G. And the other thing is, is that 5G phones are a little bit more expensive, but every new phone that you're going to buy is going to have 5G. For example, if you buy an iPhone 12 mini or you buy an iPhone 13 or you buy an iPhone 14, you're going to be getting 5G coverage anyway. It's not like an add-on. It's not like an extra feature. It's just going to be there. So the difference between a 4G phone and a 5G phone is basically the year that phone came out and maybe sometimes the price tag. For example, if you're buying something like a, you know, Samsung Galaxy A70 or something like that. Let me use a better example. If you're buying something like a budget tier 2023 phone, there's a chance it may not have 5G coverage. I'm pretty sure the Pixel 6 has 5G, but if not, there's going to be a lot of budget phones that come out this year, even last year or the year before, that you know could have 5G, but they don't because it's price year to kind of make it. So in my opinion, if you're fine with 4G LTE, keep it. You know, you're definitely not missing out on too much. But if you want to have, I guess, more of a future-proofed experience, getting that 5G device may make a little tiny bit more sense. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.